Hi, this is Mr. B. In this video, I'll explain how to use the first order rate equation to perform a variety of calculations. A first order rate law depends solely on the concentration of the reactants. The rate of such a reaction may be determined as follows, where rate is equal to the disappearance of the reactant, in this case reactant A, over the change in time. So we may write rate is equal to negative change in concentration of A divided by the change in time. And of course for a first order reaction the rate law is written as rate is equal to the rate constant times the concentration of A raised to the first power. Where if a concentration is raised to the first power obviously no value is written. The rate constant is very important in performing calculations involving first order reactions. To calculate the units for the rate constant, we write the following, where rate is equal to molarity divided by seconds, and concentration is written as brackets, where the units will be molar. Solving for K from equation 3, we generate the following where K is equal to the rate divided by the molarity of A. And since molarity will cancel, the units for the rate constant will be reciprocal seconds or second minus one. A plot of the change of concentration of reactant A versus the change in time does not represent a linear relationship. Consider the following. If we set the change in concentration of A, negative change in concentration of A divided by a change in time, equal to the rate constant times the concentration of A, the following relationship may be determined. After integrating the equality, the following equation is generated, where the negative log of the initial concentration of A divided by the final concentration of A where the initial concentration of A represents the concentration of A at T0, where T0 need not necessarily represent the beginning of the reaction. We set this equal to KT, or the rate constant, times time. This equation may now be rearranged to generate a linear relationship, where Y is equal to MX plus B. Rearranging the equation generates the following relationship, where the natural log of the initial concentration of A minus the natural log of the final concentration of A is equal to the rate constant times time. Further simplifying, we generate the following, where the negative natural log of concentration of A at TT is equal to KT minus the natural log of the initial concentration of A. And equation 7B may be simplified as follows where the natural log of the final concentration of A is equal to negative KT plus the natural log of the initial concentration of A. This represents a linear relationship, which fits the equation Y is equal to MX plus B. In other words, by finding the slope of the straight line generated from the information. The slope will represent the value of K, or the rate constant. Consider the following practice problem, where a cyclopropane produces propene. And we're given the following information, where the initial concentration of cyclopropane which represents A, is equal to 0.25 molar. The value of K, or the rate constant, is given as 6.7 times 10 to the minus 4 reciprocal seconds. The time, 8.8 .8 minutes, and we're actually trying to determine the final concentration of cyclopropane. This practice problem may be solved as follows, 
where from the previous information we know that the natural log of the initial concentration of A divided by the final concentration of A is equal to KT. In this case, the initial concentration of cyclopropane was given as 0 0.25 molar, and we're looking for, we're trying to determine the final concentration. The K is given as 6.7 times 10 to the minus 4 reciprocal seconds, and the time, 8.8 .8 minutes, represents 528 seconds. First solving the right side of the equation. K times T is equal to 0 0.354. Now we simply take the natural anti-log of both sides of the equation, which will eliminate the natural log on the left. This generates the following. 0 0.25 molar divided by the final concentration of cyclopropane is equal to the natural anti-log of 0 0.354. And the natural anti-log of 0 0.354 is equal to 1.42. To solve for the final concentration of cyclopropane, we write the following, where A represents the final concentration, is equal to 0 0.25 divided by 1.42. So the final concentration of cyclopropane will be 0 0.18 molar. Now let's perform another example by changing the conditions, where the initial concentration of cyclopropane is still 0 0.25 molar, and the final concentration is given as 0 0.15 molar. Of course, the rate constant remains the same, 6.7 times 10 to the minus 4, but now we're looking for T. In other words, how long will it take for the concentration of cyclopropane to change from 0 0.25 molar to 0 0.15 molar. From the original equation, we know that the natural log of the original concentration of the cyclopropane, which is 0 0.25, divided by the final concentration of the cyclopropane, in this case, 0 0.15, is equal to kT. Now we solve the left side of the equation with a natural log of 0 0.25 divided by 0 0.15 is equal to 0 0.511, and of course this is equal to kT. Solving for t, we write the following, where we divide through by k. t is equal to 0 0.115 divided by 0 0.00067, which represents 6.7 times 10 to the minus 4. Now we solve for t, where t is equal to 0 0.511 divided by 0 0.00067, which represents the value of k. This is equal to 762.4 seconds. And of course, 762.4 seconds may be converted to minutes by dividing by 60, and this represents 12.71 minutes. So, that pretty much explains how to use the first order rate equation. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching, and hopefully we'll see you next time. Take care.